money first. This money wants to do examination of a new bond. So examination of a new bond, they're supposed to just uh, check if this baby has born maybe with uh, been born with abnormalities or anything that is peculiar. Okay, so just try to check if at all this baby is okay in terms of uh, everything that a human being should have, or maybe there is something wrong with the baby. So that's why they are supposed to examine the baby. So you're supposed to greet the mother if the mother is nearby. If at all the mother is not yet um, uh, out of labor, so you're supposed to just stand back down. Since the mother is around, you're supposed to greet the mother. Okay, so that's what we do. So you, the first thing. Hand sanitizer, okay. So good morning, happy. Um, student number two has been assigned to examine your baby. Now please go ahead. Present your identity for you before I begin. Please sign your thing, okay. So at this moment, you should see them here, guys, because this is a newly born baby, and the newly born baby they're not yet uh, bathed, so you need to protect yourself as well as protect the baby on you. So it's part of infection prevention. So what you do, you start with the head, okay? So what you do with the head is uh, you need to first measure the circumference. The head circumference is supposed to be measured, okay? So it's supposed to go like that. So from the occipital part here, okay, you go around to the forehead there. Then you come there in the middle. So you'll be able to say the number that uh, the measuring tape gives you. So some people will use inches so that they say they don't want to be biased with the readings or measurements. So you use inches, then turn to the part for centimeters. So it gives you 36 centimeters. So normally when you do the measurement, it has to give you maybe 33 to 35. So that's a normal range, but it has given me 36, which is not bad. So the head circumference for this baby is 36 centimeters. So from there, you now go to the head itself. So you need to look out for, first of all, the sutures, okay? Sutures are those uh, uh, parts or spaces between the bones. So you need to just run through and see. Okay, so as you are doing that, you're able to feel. Is there maybe, say, overriding of the sutures, or are they overlapping, or they're just uh, paused after death? Okay, so in this case, the sutures are not overriding, or there is no excessive modding because I've run through. So from the sutures, what you're going to now assess will be the fontanelles. So we have two fontanelles, namely the anterior fontanel and the posterior fontanel. So the anterior fontanel, because there are sutures which come from here, okay, coronal suture, then sagittal and frontal, so they, they all meet there to form a diamond shape, like the way it is, okay? So this is a diamond shape. So I'm going to report to say that anterior fontanel is diamond shaped because the sutures meet there, okay, to form a diamond then you're going to also say if the suture, if the fontanel is uh, bulging or depressed. So in this case, there is no depression or there is no bulging of the fontanel. Then you go to the posterior fontanel. The posterior fontanel is the lambdoidal suture, which comes from uh, this end here, okay? And then it forms um, a triangle. So the posterior fontanel is triangular shaped. So it from the triangle, so triangular shaped. So it's also not bulging or depressed. So that's what you report. Then you go to report to other things, two things which are very important. One, you're going to report about cephalohematoma. Hematoma means blood. So this blood can accumulate as a result of an injury during death. So it can just form one side, okay? It does not cross the suture line or the sagittal suture to come this other side. So it is either localized this side or localized this side. So if it's localized on one area, meaning that cephalohematoma is present. So I'm going to report that. Now in this case, there is no cephalohematoma. Then we got to another, another one where I'm going to say caput sarcedenum. 
coupled cystigenum is just fluid collection be, uh, just uh, beneath the scalp or just under the scalp. So caput sacidinum crosses over, meaning that it will be a swelling which is a fluid like just okay on both sides of the suture here. So that's a caput sacidinum. So from there, meaning we are done with the head. But then in OSP, you not examine the baby from head to toe. You you'll be given parameters to say, okay, just do the head and face or head and chest. You can do the head and chest or just say just say examine the head okay so in this case you move from there you go to the face so on the face you look at the face if it's um, one side is longer than the other meaning that you know that there is facial paralysis maybe there was a injury to the facial nerve so in this case you will say that there is no facial paralysis because you can't see any disparity in terms of uh, the facial expression okay so there is no facial paralysis, meaning that uh, everything is equal. Then from there, you go to the eyes. So the eyes, when you look at them, they are in one line, okay, from this side to the other side. So we are going to say that the eyes are symmetrical and well aligned. So they are well aligned and symmetric. So now you can try to open up. If the baby has closed the eyes, you can try to open up and see. Are the eyeballs present? So in this case, the eyeballs are present. We say that eyeballs are present. Okay? And then you can't see any congenital cataract. There is no congenital conjunctivitis or there is no discharge. No cataract, no conjunctivitis, which can be congenital. So from there, you can go to the nose. Okay, so the nose is separated by the septum, as you can see, and also the two nostrils. Okay, so the the nose are the nostrils are parted. Okay, so you can now move. You can just say that also there is no nasal discharge. You can visibly see it. Okay, no nasal discharge. Then you can go to the lips. The lips are not cut. So if you can't see any cut, meaning that there is no cleft lip. So there's no cleft lip, okay, as you can see. Then you can try to open baby's mouth and see the palate. So you can see the hard palate and the soft palate, okay. So there is no cleft palate as well because there is no opening in the palate. Then the tongue is present because the babies were born without a tongue, which is a glossier. So the tongue is present. Then look at the teeth. There are no false teeth. So meaning that about the mouth, you are, you, you are thinking you are done. You can also add other things like um, cyanosis. You can't see any bluish discoloration in the mouth, meaning that there is no cyanosis. From the mouth, you go now to the chin. So the chin is not uh, protruding or hyper or hypo, meaning that there is no, uh, there's no receding chin, okay, which can be an indicator for Down syndrome. So the chin is not receding. So from there, you go to the ears. The ears are in the same line. You can say the ears are symmetrical. Okay, they are just there in the same line. And then apart from not being, um, apart from being symmetrical, they're not lowly set, meaning that they're not in the neck. They're just where they're supposed to be. So you can say they're symmetrical and not lowly set. Okay. Meaning if they're lowly set, it's a sign of Down's syndrome. And then you can also hold the, the pinna here and see, and the lobe to see if they're attached to the skin. Meaning that if they're attached, meaning they are webbed. So in this case, there is no webbing of the ears. Okay, you can see even this side, there's no webbing of the ears. So from there, you can now move downwards to the neck. You can palpate lightly, so during palpation, okay, there is no congenital goiter. There is no congenital goiter. And the neck is not webbed. It's free. So this neck is free. It's not webbed. So you can move away now from the neck. You go now to the upper limbs. So you can cover the head and move on to the upper limbs, okay? So the upper limbs are symmetrical, meaning that they're equal. There is no upper limb which is uh, shorter here. They are equal, so they are symmetrical. 
Then you can also test for uh, any paralysis because there can be Ebb's palsy. During birth, there can be a brachial nerve injury, so there can be paralysis of the arm. So there is no paralysis of the arm, okay? And then you can test for dislocation. There is no dislocation and no fracture, okay? So apart from that, you can also now see, you can count the digits. Are they five? One, two, three, four, five. Even this side, one, two, three, four, five. Now, the only thing that I've discovered is that there is no extra digit, but the fingers are webbed, meaning that they are attached to each other. They are webbed here. So meaning that they are attached. So this is webbing of the fingers. Even this other hand, the fingers are webbed. They are touching, they are holding on to each other. So these are webbed. So you can report this to say that the baby um, is born with webbed fingers, but no extra digit. From there, you can go to the chest. So the chest, we are going to measure the chest circumference, which should be 30, 33 to 35, somewhere there. Some would say 30, up to 36. So you can use the inches and measure using the nipple line, where the nipples are. Okay, so let me see. These are the inches, which have, which have given me 12. Now let me see the centimeters. Okay, so we go there, 12. So that's 30 centimeters, okay? It's um, not ab uh, highly abnormal, it's okay. So apart from that now, since you have measured the chest circumference, you can see of, uh, the respiratory pattern for the rise and fall of the chest. So in this case, you have to observe, what about the left part of the chest? Is it rising more than the, the right, or the right is rising more than the left, so you could be able to observe. Are they rising at the same time? In this case, they are rising at the same time, meaning that there is symmetry, okay? So there's equal chest movement, meaning there is no damage to the ribs while, while the baby was uh, uh, being born or passing through the passage, okay? So no damage there. So what you can do now, you can also now listen to the air entry as well as the heart rate or the heart beat, okay? Then you count there the heart rate or the other COVID. Okay, it's above 100. So since it's above 100, there's no need for resuscitation. We were going to resuscitate if the baby's heart rate was below uh, 100 or if it was maybe 60 beats per minute, then we're going to resuscitate. So from there, we were able even to see that the skin integrity is okay, there is no rush, then we can move on to the abdomen. Okay, so on the abdomen, you can see, is the membrane present, okay, or is the skin present, are the muscles present, because their babies were born with the omphalocele, omphalocele, that's an abnormality where you find that things here, um, uh, the, the contents of the abdomen are protruding because of a malformation of the skin and the muscles of the abdomen, so there is no omphalocele, here the, the skin integrity is okay. And then if you look at the contour of the abdomen, meaning that you are looking at, is it distended, okay? Or is it depressed? So in this case, they, it's, it's flat, it's not distended. The abdomen is not distended, meaning the baby's uh, tummy uh, looks fine, okay? Since this is a newly born, you can also look at the clump, okay? So the cord clump is intact and the baby is not bleeding. So in this case, you're able to not to say that there is no bleeding and uh, no sign of infection or necrosis is happening yet. Okay, so you can now move on. So what you can do is uh, you can skip the, the this part here, the 1%. You can go to the lower limbs. So the lower limbs, you can check for symmetry. Symmetry meaning that uh, you want to see are they limbs equal, so you can put them like that to see if they're equal, because if you find that one limb is shorter than the other, you'll be able to report. Now in this case, they're equal, they are symmetrical. So the lower limbs are equal. Then you can test for fractures, because the birth process can cause fractures, so there are no fractures. Then you can also do Otolani's test, where you abduct, adapt, and move, okay? 
so that, okay, this is a dam, you can't do the abduction properly or abduction. So you can do that to test for dislocation of the hip joint. You can do Otolani's test, okay? From there, you can check now the digits. Do you have any extra digits? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So you don't have any extra toe, okay? Nothing's there. Then we can now see, are they webbed? Yes. So we have these toes which are webbed, okay? So these are webbed. So at this moment, you can now go to the 1% to examine. So if it's a girl, if it's a boy, you can still examine in a similar manner. So this is a boy. So you're able to see there's a, a penis there, and then you check for the urethral opening. So the urethral opening is centrally located in this manner. Now, if there was any abnormality, you would say that there is uh, maybe epispagiasis, meaning that the urethral opening is up here, okay? That's epispagiasis, meaning dorsal. Then ventral, meaning it's uh, under there, down, meaning that that's a uh, hypospagiasis. So you would uh, do that. Then you would go to the scrotum and uh, palpate. In case there is a um, cryptokydism, cryptokydism is uh, whereby the, the testis did not descend to, from the abdomen into the scrotum, okay, and descended testicles or testis. So that's cryptokydism. So again, you feel for ruge. You're trying to feel for ruge because you want to see and if uh, you haven't felt any ruge, meaning the child might have been a premature uh, baby, so you try to feel, okay, there's ruge here. Okay, so that's what you feel for, okay? Then um, in case of uh, a lady or, a, sorry, a baby who's a girl, you try to also examine if the opening is okay. What about the labia? Minora, is it bigger than the majora, meaning that's a premature? So now the, also that one you can try to measure. Now you go to the back. So the back, you go to the anal area. The anal area, meaning the anus there, the opening, is there. If there's a membrane on the anal area, we'd say that that's an imperforate anus. Imperforate anus, meaning it's not perforated. Now there, it's, uh, it's perforated, meaning the anus is there. Okay? Then you go to the back. The back, as you can just see by inspection, and have you seen any spinal bifida? You know spinal bifida, meaning that uh, there are types as well meaning that there's an opening there, you can see the spinal cord, okay? The spinal cord is protruding, or there's a bulging some, or something swelling from the spinal cord. That can be spinal bifida, okay? Or there is it, is there hair somewhere there? You can just try to observe what you can see. Then the vertebral column, the vertebral column, you can try to see the alignment. The alignment, it has to be straight from there up to, so from the cervical up to the uh, maybe where you can see maybe lumbar or sacral, it has to be straight, okay? So from there, you can just also see the curvature from the cervical. Is it bending outward? If it's bending outward like that, in that direction, meaning the child has got a scoliosis. If it's bending upwards or outwards, meaning they've got kyphosis. If it's bending inwards, especially in the lumbar region, meaning they've got uh, lordosis. So you can try to see the, uh, the way the vertebra is aligned. And then as you can see, there are no injuries on the back and there is no rash and everything else. So it's intact. So at this moment, it means that you are done. But then during us, we'll be asked to just pick one area which you'll be able to examine, like I said, head or chest, or maybe they say abdomen. So you should try to see what you're examining, okay? and just try to be quick as you are trying to examine this baby. <laughs> so you can wrap up the baby and give the baby to the mother and thank the mother. Thank you, Happy, for allowing me to examine your baby. And you need to keep this baby warm so that the baby does not catch a cold. And also they shouldn't catch pneumonia. Okay, keep them warm. And then as um, we are breastfeeding, try to ensure that the baby is well attached to the breast so that they breastfeed well. So thank you very much for allowing me to do this procedure. Okay, here's the baby. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. It's quite a long procedure, but you can still get the boy. Thank you very much.